Okay, what we're looking at today is a Hitachi V152F. It's a 15 megahertz scope, um, approximately uh, 40 years old, thereabouts, uh, maybe even 50. It's an excellent shape. A close look at the uh, at the front panel shows no scratches. Very nice, shiny, stainless brushed uh, look to the surface. Uh, we have a well, maybe a small abrasion on the uh, the panel here. Rub some of the paint off of the um, of the bezel, but uh, but all in all, in remarkable shape. Cabinet wise, <clears throat> have a couple minor paint mars in the back here. Uh, if you can see them or not, I don't know. Um, the cabinet's in very good condition. And the right side. A little more light here. Okay. And. Uh, well, to the rear, there, just where the coils and cables are wound. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this thing through some of its paces and uh, spot check it to make sure that we are good in calibration and that we're functional. I want you all to be able to see that it's a functional unit. Okay, so in order for me to be able to produce a triangle wave where I make a full cycle of the triangle in my 10 divisions, <clears throat> and, I, and I do so where I can definitely see that I'm linear, I've drawn a straight line here and then I've reversed myself and drawn a straight line back up again, then that means that the scope is capable of producing that waveform at this frequency in a linear fashion which me, which equates to meaning in a true fashion I'm getting a true waveform out of here I put a triangle wave in I'm getting a triangle wave out and the assumption would be then that if I can do this then I can make a, a sine wave just as well so you say well why am I not using sine waves well I could the problem is if I use a sine wave can you tell by looking at it that I am truly drawing a sine wave? You can tell I'm approximating one. But if you see a straight line, you know it's a straight line. And it's just about as hard for the scope to do that straight line as it is that sine wave. Uh, especially when you get to the cusp and you make your change. So, uh, this is a good way for you to verify that the scope is providing a true signal. And, uh, and then we also can see the, the frequency being displayed and the amplitude, and we can use that to our advantage to, to test the scope. So, so let's get started. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and set up some, uh, some tests. All right. What I've done is I've put a, a 100 hertz signal from my generator into both the channel 1 and channel 2 inputs. And I am right now displaying them 10 milliseconds per division. There are 10 divisions across the screen. So I have a 100 hertz signal being displayed on the 10 millisecond per division uh, band. That means I should get one cycle in one division. And I am. I see a cycle every single division all the way across the screen. And that's to be expected. If I was to go to 5 milliseconds per division, I would see at least 5 complete cycles. 2, 3, 4, 5. If I go to 2, I would see at least 2 full cycles. We can shift that a little bit here to, uh, to make that very obvious. Alright. 1, 2. Here's 1 full division. This is at one millisecond per division, 10 milliseconds across the screen. Okay, if I'm uh, able to, to display 
this 100 cycles in 10 divisions at one millisecond per, di per division. It all makes sense again because I've gone 10 milliseconds across the screen and I've shown one cycle. So because we're dis displaying now one full cycle per division and we're running at 0.1 seconds, milliseconds per division, then we have to be running at 10 kilohertz. Um, as I step forward, I go to 50 microseconds per division and I now see one, two, three, four, five steps. Uh, I get two full steps for, um, for 20 microseconds per division. A little more obvious if I play with it here. All right, about like, about like yay, two full cycles. And then finally, at 10 microseconds per division, uh, I should again be able to see that I've completed one full cycle, 10 divisions, which I do. And that's at 10 kilohertz. Let's step our frequency now up to 100 kilohertz. There's 100, and we come back down to the screen here, and at 100 kilohertz, um, running 10 microseconds per division, I'm getting a cycle every division, which again I should, 10 cycles across the screen. And once again, if I go to, to 5 microseconds per division, I see 5 peaks. Two microseconds, I get two peaks. One microseconds, I get one full cycle in ten divisions. So that's ten, you know, this is again one microsecond per division. Ten divisions is ten microseconds, which is a hundred kilohertz. Okay. So now let's uh, let's kick our frequency up once again. And we are going to go for megahertz. I would say we're pretty close. How right about there? Okay. And at one megahertz, we are getting cycle every division so we have 10 divisions and once again we see the progression where if I go to 0.5 microseconds per division five peaks and 0.2 microseconds per division I get two peaks and again that all makes sense so two peak two full peaks one two cycles and then that's the end of my scale, and I now go to the XY uh, position if I go any further. So it just proves I've hit the end of scale. So we've just gone through the entire um, time division bands, and we've checked the, the linearity, and we've checked the accuracy of the, of the scale for all of the inputs uh, from... 10 milliseconds per division all the way up to 0.2 microseconds per division. So you've seen that the, that the scope is capable and it's linear.